recall the select board meeting of, of we're going to start to say March, that's bad, of uh, May 17th to order. And okay, see now I don't, I don't know. All messed up. So then here, I got to open the stuff up. No, I don't need that. Good morning, first, we have the public comments. Okay, I, what I don't have opened is an agenda. Not on the agenda. Uh, I got minutes, minutes. Just a second here. Mm -hmm. I got you. Okay, now I'll, now I'll get to the right email. Well, I'll tell you what else is better at home. The screen's a lot bigger. <laughs> yeah, I don't even try on the phone anymore. Okay. Um, first of all, do you make any, need to make any changes to the agenda? Uh, let's see. I have one note on the Green Mountain Byway. Okay. We can add that to other business. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I have to open up. Um, any changes? How about, are, are any? Really <laughs> way to look here. Yeah. Public comment. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there you go. It's Mary. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I didn't get this on the agenda, so I'm just going to make a public comment. I've talked to Ron about this for a while. I've taken an interest in Japanese knotweed. Um, it's the king of invasives, and I don't know how much you all know about it, but uh, I was really struck when I was driving around in Johnson and Montgomery last year um, uh, doing the census work, how there was knotweed everywhere. and most of the places I'm driving around in Hyde Park don't have that much. I know Hyde Park has some, but um, I happen to live on Cooper Hill Road. McKinstry Hill Road is pretty clean. Centerville Road is pretty clean. And um, so I'm really interested in starting to get some energy around keeping it that way, getting people educated. Um, it's right now is when you can really easily see knotweed. It's just popping up and growing like crazy every day. So, um, and I've also talked to Ron about for, for a while about the, I think it's the Gambrell property in North Hyde Park, which has a big, uh, just a big population of knotweed. And um, I've got some ideas about how to get that under control. I've been doing some research and talking to, um, uh, a couple of other towns that all have conservation commissions and that are doing some different things trying to combat knotweed. So um, I wanted to let you know that I'm super interested in trying to do that and trying to find some volunteers around Hyde Park who can also be interested. And um, and I guess to the extent that I, I'd like to ask anything of you tonight, it's, it's um, uh, that I can sit down with Ron and hopefully um, Mark French, if he's got some time to pick a couple of places where we can agree on a program of how to do a few things, what kind of effort is required. And I'm not talking about pesticides right now. I'm just talking about the physical interventions of what you can do to cut back knotweed and the timing that you need to do it. And, um, and also hatch a plan for doing something in North Hyde Park at the um, Gambrel property. So that's two things, a couple of things alongside the road. Um, I particularly am interested in Cooper Hill Road and McKinstry Hill Road because I drive past them every day and I see where these tiny patches that I'd really like to just stop them in their tracks. Um, and so I intend to talk to all my neighbors about that. But um, so that the Gambrell property and then some mm -hmm. outreach ideas about how to get people in town more uh engaged, aware of what not we're doing, how to get it under control and how to participate in that. So that's my thought. Mary, what, what do you call on the Gram Gambrell property? Have I got the name wrong, Ron? Is it Gamble? Gamble. Gamble? Yeah, yeah. at the intersection of 100 C. Then, 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 then that's town property. We own that piece of property. Exactly why I'm bringing it to your attention. Yeah, that the 
there's a bunch of knotweed on it and it could be brought under control. It's a great flat spot to try and do some things. And you could even do a couple of different things on the property to see what works and what doesn't work and get you know <clears throat> people engaged. And by the way, clear up the knotweed. Mary, what are you proposing for a way of managing it? Um, well, I guess I don't really have a clear plan for managing it in the long run, but the short, the short answer is, in some of the immediate places where I see um, uh, small outbreaks, it, it, there are two possibilities. There's cutting it every two weeks, um, which people say is a good thing to do. There's a second possibility, which is cutting it back and covering it, um, which may not work in certain roadside uh, locations. Um, and there is a there is a third very uh carefully managed way of of doing some sort of pesticide intervention but i don't profess to know enough about it at this point or to advocate for it but if you for example one strategy that i've read about is that you cut in june then the plant continues to grow it'll be a big size plant by june the plant continues to grow until it, it you know using up its stored energy and its roots until september you'd cut it again then immediately inject or drop in some pesticide and then leave it for the winter. Um, but I'm not advocating that, I'm just saying that is what I've read about. I'm particularly interested in um, two projects, one I've spoken to somebody and the other one I'm still waiting to hear from somebody in Warren and Waitsfield because they both have quite advanced projects where they're, um, uh trying to tackle knotweed and testing lots of things that work um and i could get into more detail with you but i didn't put myself on the agenda so i'm so so mary the uh I, i've done some research on it myself i've got it on my property i have yep. some fill brought in and it was it contained some of the knotweed in there and i've done research and actually over in britain um they have a real terrible problem with it you realize yeah. that the, the root system goes down up, up to six feet? Yeah, yeah, it's so a monster. <laughs> um, now, I've seen the ground covering that you're talking about, two spots. Uh, yeah. Just before the North Wolcott Road on Route 15 on the left is a bank here covered in plastic. They yeah. had, a, they had uh, an infestation there, plus uh, across the Little Osmer Pond in uh, Crassberry. Um, they, they've done that, and that was probably, say, four, Three to four years ago, that I, uh, when I was doing maintenance at the uh, dam up there, I, yeah. I walked and put that in, and it was a community effort, which I think would be probably something that you uh, were interested. In. But there's, I mean, the the map's already been drawn on how to do it, I guess, but with with covering it. But I, they haven't exposed it yet. I don't know how long it, that covering has to stay in place. To, to, I to, I know where you're talking about. Sorry, I can't see you guys, so I'm not sure I know who I'm speaking to. Oh, you have to see me. She just sees the little. Did you see the see Brian. Brian jacket. Oh, okay. Thank you, Brian. Um, yeah, I just went to see a, a, a woman who uh, is on the Craftsbury uh, uh, Conservation Commission yesterday, and I saw the site that you're talking about. And um, boy, it's a it's a monster of a site. There's a lot of knotweed there, and um, I I. I don't know what their plan is yet to uncover it and see what's happening under there, but um, yeah, they've got a lot of tarp and black uh, plastic and logs weighting it down. And they, I think they've actually, they've actually got a um, like a syringe type thing that you put yep. the pesticide in and you actually inject it into the uh, plant itself, um, but it kills that one plant. It doesn't kill down to the root, my understanding is. It doesn't kill all the way down to the root. I, I'm just, I'm not sure, Brian, yet. I, sorry? No, you're right. Go ahead. I, I'm not sure about that. I haven't really, um, you know, done enough research to know what truly works um, on that. And I intend to keep going because I've got, I've, I've, I've been reading quite a lot. And there's, a, there's some people at the US, oh, I can't remember where. Forest Service or something that have a program where they they recommend spray spray bottle with uh, dye and the the craftsbury people did the injection 
Um, I've yet to actually talk to expert pesticide people to to know what actually is working and who's done some of that. But I intend to do it, not not because I'm advocating for pesticide use. I just want to know what actually works. And same with the, yeah, the same. Yeah, just one thing, Roland, Bobby, Roland, Bobin. Do you know Don Avery? Yeah, very well. Yeah. Talk to Don Avery about it because he's tried and tried and tried to get that stuff because he's the basis with it coming down the river. I know. Talk, talk to Don because I know what Don's done. And he said there ain't nothing he's, he's done to kill it yet. It's a really yeah. horrible thing is to, he had, to get it. He had one pile of it buried up for about five years with plastic. Figured that might kill it. It didn't kill it. Gotcha. So if I was you, I'd give down down a call. He's a very good guy. Plus, Mary on uh, on YouTube, there's a whole big section on how to uh, how people are trying to manage it. Kim, what's Kim's last? So just so you're aware of it. Yeah, great. And send me any links if you you know can think of something you've seen that's really good. I'll read it. I'll look at it. And um, I'm really anxious to get down and see what's what's going on in Warren because there's, you know, I I get it's a it's a monster thing and. Well, I, I just feel like I don't want to throw my hands up. I'd quite like to keep the, at least, at the very least, keep the places that are free of it, free of it, if we can. Yeah. In Britain, they, they literally dig down six feet and remove all the soil to a, uh, and then they truck it to a special spot and, and dump it there. So, yeah, it's. Well, th there are some issues about that, that I'd be interested in. This is where I, I suppose the road crew is most stuck with the problem about when you have to do things where you know you've got contaminated material where you're going to put it and that sort of thing so there will be eventually maybe some things that the town you know might like to think hard about whether whether there is space for us to have a like a place a dump of some sort but that's not where i am yet i i don't pretend to know the answers of that i just want to get some energy around it and see if we can um yeah maybe maybe ultimately it does lead to some kind of conservation commission in hyde park i don't know but right now i think ron coined a great term for the program which is not in hyde park spelled k-n-o-t i thought that was <laughs> funny. i think i think mary uh it's always great when somebody gets into something that you know it's going to help oh well i think yeah that that can um uh, to improve something, so I think I think the select board needs to assign you as a delegation of one to begin the not weed intervention Great. program development for Hyde Park. <laughs> Great! If you guys are willing to do that tonight, I'd be I'd be thrilled. And um, and I was thinking, you know, if if Ron can spend some time and hopefully Mark too, just to make sure we're all on the same page and if i need to get permission for anything i want to do then ron would know how to do that and yeah sure yeah and there's also as we were saying i know there's a lot on the already on the rail trail oh yeah yeah along the rail trail she's saying yeah yeah, uh, yeah. so but if you, if you find the cure for this you'll be a hero throughout the world from what i've read <laughs> Yeah, the, the other approach is to figure out what not weed is good for and turn it into a crop. <laughs> I, I, think, I think we'd all have to become addicts to whatever that is, and that's probably not a good solution because the supply is plentiful. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Thanks, Thank Mary. you very much. I appreciate it. I'm going to sign off because I've got to go plant my vegetable garden. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. They didn't even try to burn that stuff, right? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. they tried everything. Yeah. They tried it. It. You, yeah. Like I said, I had it uh, because of what was drawn in on the property there. And, and other than I'm trying to get it now so it's down so I can start mowing it. That's the only way that you can really manage it, but it's always going to be there. Yeah, if you can manage it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, let's see, if, do we have anybody Dave, else for public comment? Dave, we just got Dave here, we're set. Okay, um, how about uh, reviewing and approving the minutes for the 
May 3rd and um, April 19th meetings. Was there a modification? Nothing to go with the two that no book okay. No. Anybody got any? people seen him? Need any changes? Move accepted as written. Okay. Second. All right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Today you can hear it all right. Yeah, yes, I can, Roy. <laughs> Roy. <laughs> I've never been insulted so bad in my whole life. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, I thought he was good. <laughs> <Sarah Kruger. laughs> um, okay, and we've got, um, let's see, next we have Emily. Welcome. Hi there. Um, am I able to share screen? Could uh, we? You, sh you should be able to. Let me get permission. And Corey's going to start, but I'm going to be the screen sharer. <laughs> okay. Okay. And it looks like you have control. So thank you everyone for letting us join you tonight to talk about Laws Rock and what it's all about. So if you know Health and Human Services at all, you know we love our acronyms. So Laws Rock is the Lamoille Area Health and Human Services Response Command Center. Um, I'm Corey Propal. I'm a nurse. I work in Copley in the Quality Management Department. I'm also one of the three unified commanders for Laws Rock. And what we really wanted to do is start off with kind of how this group came to be and just kind of give you the backstory. So I'm just going to start in. Just over a year ago now, we were just at the beginning of understanding how COVID was going to affect us in every single one of our systems. People and organizations were all trying to figure out, how do I help? How do we respond? What is our role? Both Copley and the Lamoille Restorative Center were thinking of getting the partners together to figure this out. Luckily, they realized they were both gonna do that and they joined forces. So early on in April, we had a group of about 40 people representing that many organizations meeting to discuss what are the needs they were seeing? How do they get supplies? Where do they get them from? How do you fund them? How do you deliver them safely? We quickly learned we were going to need a really coordinated effort to address these concerns if we were going to succeed. So side note, around the same time, a few weeks earlier, Washington County had a group that started to form and they were using this instant command system based on famous model uh, so they could have a this like organized approach to responding to COVID. Based on what our group was seeing and hearing, we thought this was worth a try in our area. Our group got trained in instant command. We worked with our counterparts in Washington County to understand how we could implement this here, what are the pieces that we could use, what would we have to change? Our counties are very different. And so Emily is sharing our infant command model. Um, and this is kind of how it came, like how it formed. So everyone you see there, it's about 20 people from 20 different organizations, not including those fantastic liaisons to the right that really filled out this, this model. Now this could look daunting, but the really important piece to take away from this, at the core are those operational groups. So we have housing, food, medical, mental health, substance misuse, and employment. Everyone else on that org chart is working across organizations, across sectors to support those groups. Those were the areas we were finding that had the most urgent need. And they also represented some of our community's most vulnerable community members. Um, at, at the beginning, uh, our group was meeting very frequently. We were discussing what the most pressing issues we were seeing. So we set objectives for the whole group and with clear timelines. Um, and we worked together to accomplish these goals. And it was really exciting. This is the first time that we felt as we did. We were really pairing together, not a siloed group, not one organization, but all of our organizations 
to start meeting the needs of our community. And we couldn't do it without all of these pieces. And so I really, I'm gonna pass it off to Emily to talk about one of our really important pieces, which is the public information aspect. Um, we'll give it to Emily. On, I'm trying to figure out how to change what I'm screen sharing here. Um, I'm going to share a different part of my screen. Um, so um, you may be getting, you probably get each week, um, the email that I sent out, the newsletter that go, goes out to about 600 leaders around the county. This is coming, basically I, I, I function as a funnel. And so we have these meetings where we set the objectives. Now, one of the meetings has been information around vaccination, and that's been an objective that's been carrying over the last several times. And so you'll notice that we're regularly sharing information about vaccination. And um, you may have seen the video that Dr. Quinn made about vaccination that came directly out of the objective to share very specifically why people in our community are vaccinating their children. Um, you know, there's also an objective. We've had several objectives around sharing the options in substance misuse. And so, you know, we decided to prioritize this week people sharing back out medication assisted treatment. But, you know, this goes out every week and it goes out to quite a number of leaders around the, the county. You know, there's stuff about the summer camp programs because that's been another real focus of the group. This reflects the priorities of all of our health and human services organizations in the county. Um, and, you know, our goal when we send it to you and we send it to the librarians, when we send it to the school officers, you know, all these different groups, it goes out to a lot of different people, is that you'll then share it right back out um, with, you know, the parts that are relevant to people in your community and that you'll know that this is there. And the whole idea is for you to be able to skim through it really quickly so that when you run into someone at the gas station, you can say, you know what? Actually, I heard I, it's interesting you're having a hard time finding employees. I just read something about that. And then you know that that information is there. So that's been our goal. Um, what we also do is everything that goes there, and let me see here, also goes right here on the United Way of Lamoille County resource page. So anything that ends up in that newsletter is also going to end up here. So let me um, think of an example that when, well, let me. I will pick um, medical where healthcare. There we go. Um, so healthcare, we put all the health updates in here. If you need a doctor, you need a dentist, you can click through. Um, but I also went in today and adjusted some things about the MAT team because that was additional information. And then there was information that came out about Vermont Health Connect today. So I added that in as well. So anytime that you read something in the newsletter that you're then like, I read something three weeks ago, I don't wanna go back through my email to try to find it. You can always come right here to this newsletter and click on the button that's most related to it and you'll find it. So if you're trying to remember what there was about summer camps, you might click on the parents page and there's information about summer camp right there. So we're updating it all the time. And the idea is for it to be accessible when you guys need it for the community and also to share it out with the community. The hope is you'll also share with me the things you want shared out. Um, but it's been really, really successful. Um, Corey and I are slightly competitive. Actually, we're really competitive. I'm gonna be super honest. We're like crazy competitive. So we were, um, we had the highest increase in the entire state in flu vaccination this year. And a lot of that had to do with this group really working together, rowing in the same direction and pushing that out. We are now 0.3%, 0.3% behind Chittenden County for our vaccination for COVID. And that, that would tie us for third place if we caught up with them. And like it's Chittenden, so I'm super competitive. Um, but it's really, it's been a, um, it's been exciting to see it have real impact. And I'm going to give one example of real impact, and then I'll let Corey give another example of real impact. Um, and I mean, and we have lists of, you know, pages and pages of successes that we've had in those, those areas. Everything from um, voting at the hotels where GA housing was, um, you know, providing help with that to, um, to 
helping get freezers around the county. And I'm going to tell you about that particular one. So our, our housing, our, sorry, our food team told us that we had a problem that we don't have enough freezers. And it's not just a problem around Thanksgiving time. It was a real problem with everyone eats that there weren't enough places to put the meals. So we got funding. We, um, we worked together as a group and our, um, Planning chief and I were we're talking to the food folks and then I called Richie Westman and Richie put me in touch with a person who put me in touch with a person who put me in touch with another person. And we finally found funding and then Capstone stepped in and Capstone became the fiscal agent and our food team um, worked with all sorts of different organizations to figure out, figure out where to put these freezers. And we now have a system of freezers around the county, nine different freezers that Capstone is organizing that are getting filled by community groups. One is in someone's garage. There's another one in a church. There's some in the food pantries, but the idea is that the food's now spread out around the county and there's freezers to preserve it. It's a very small and elegant example of all of the different things that we've really seen happening with this kind of collaboration. And I'll let uh, Corey give one more example. I feel I'm actually gonna change it up tonight, Emily. Um, mine is more around the homelessness uh, population. So obviously this isn't a new problem. It's been around forever, but it certainly was exacerbated by COVID. You know, people lost their jobs, financial situations were in ruins, our homeless numbers went up. We were also getting people from other counties into our county who are homeless. Um, at the same time, there was a lot of money coming this year and next year for homeless initiatives. And so we're like, how do we, we're all these individual organizations, how do we harness all of this, this money, these funds to good, to something that we absolutely need? And I will tell you that Lamoille Mental Health and the Lamoille Community House, they are working so hard with this population. They do not have the time nor the, the assets in their own small nonprofit to help them with any of this. So Laws Rock did this call to action, this call to landlords um, to help, to leverage some of this. So Emily and our whole public information, we have another um, Tori Johnson team member, put it in the newsletter. We put in social media, articles in the paper. We got Sherry Marcelino, an interview um, for VPR to raise awareness, to try to get people engaged and understand that they, maybe they could be a landlord and what funds were available to them. So it's really just sharing this word, getting it out to as many people as possible in as many channels as possible. We could not do that without this group. You know, Sherry couldn't do this. And I'm, my heart's with the Lamoille Community House. Uh, that is my 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 organization, my my board. So I just think of how much every organization is benefiting from having this group work with them and, and support all of their great work. So that's just one, again, one of many examples. But I'll take any questions you have for us. Well, I, th I think that's a, a good overarching explanation of of uh, how the group came together and what you're doing and and um, as you seek to continue, I don't know how many other folks here get the get the uh, the emails um, but there is there's there's a uh, you make it very easy to access information to be able to help people find the services that they need. Um, I get the emails yeah you get the emails. Mm -hmm. yep yeah. Yep. Uh, right. yeah. It's, um, I don't, does anybody have any questions for them or you see what they are? I think it's a great resource. Yeah. Are, are you, um, are you asking anything of us or educating us and having us be part of the, move the information along? Absolutely. Education, please move the information along. And then also think of us too. If you have something, if you need to share resources, we are here. We're here to help your community. How can we work together? So do think of us um, if something arises. We've been really, really appreciative of the way that our towns have, you know, highlighted the resource page on the United Way page and um, tried to really share the information out every way possible because it is hard. Not, you know, our health and human services organizations are pretty tiny and they don't necessarily have the bandwidth to try to reach out to every single corner. So it's super helpful the way our towns have been supportive of that. Okay, I guess if we don't have any other questions for you, thank you.
Thank you for what you're doing. Uh, we we appreciate it as public officials. Uh, again, yeah, information and making sure that it's available to people in about ten different ways is what really is what really helps. Because what what works for one family is not going to work for another family. So it's terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night. Night. Okay. All right. On to the highway annual work plan review, the town excavator, and um, a uh, set a date to meet with the with the Prospect Street neighbors. So when Prospect Street didn't get the end of it got cleaned up, right? That that was on the that was one of the things when we were out there last year, really. We said we do, and they they got out there, and that's all done. Um, everybody got the the annual work plan. Yeah. So, no need. I got a question on that excavator part on that. Uh, well, you know. well, let, let's get. We'll get to that first. Let's do the work plan, then we'll get to the excavator. Okay. <clears throat> anybody see any sort of glaring additions or things that need to be changed? I'm gonna, I'm, gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get back into dragging paper all over the place with me again. <laughs> I have it so nicely sprawled that oh I'm on my desk. Hmm. Anything jump out at you, Rolly? No. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, I'm sorry. Your theory doesn't need yeah, it. Siri, you don't you don't care. You don't care about the work plans here. <laughs> Um, so it happens when you try to clean your screen. Uh, okay, now let's have a conversation about excavators. Yes, they want to know where. Let's... Yeah, when we started discussing this, we were talking like a, 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 a E60 Volvo, like a 12,000 pound excavator. And I see when they put it in there, they put it in for a 30,000 pound excavator. Well, they don't need a 30,000 pound excavator for what work the town does. If, if you had a 30,000 pound excavator, number one, you're going to have, to have steel tracks, which we don't want running up and down the highways. You're going to have to have a triaxle trailer, which is very, very expensive. You're only going to be able to tow it in your dump trucks, not, not your tow trucks. And, and there's not a thing that I can think of the town can't do with only a 12,000 pound excavator. Because if it was any bigger than that, they would hire the job done anyways. You agree with me, Roy? No, no. Dave, I want to see you with Dave. a pound excavator, Dave, to come down here and load them tandem trucks. They much more that they're 13 and a half, 13 and a half foot reach on that uh, 12,000 pound. We'll get one up here and we'll try it out and we'll let you try to load a tandem truck with one. Okay, I'll tell you what, but we, we can make that happen. I'll I'll get but somebody I, we know I, they can run one. No, and we both know him very well, and I'm sure he'll be glad to do a demo for us. Well, I'm just Dave. Not Dave, I talked to the town of Wolka who just bought a brand new excavator. I think that one's eighteen thousand and they can't put ledge rock out. Which is our biggest thing right now, without tipping it. Uh, you're talking like a mini. And you can't do town work with that. That's you're way undersized. And okay. talk to James Wood and Joe Lowell. You know, high Park taxpayers who own machines kind of laughed at me when I talked to them about a fourteen thousand pound machine. And they all are. You got to be twenty eight thousand, or you're going to regret it. And that's talking to you know taxpayers that run them every day. Yeah, I mean they, 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 they're they in the business. They know, but it just just seems to me like it's a big overkill for for what the town needs. It, it helps you want to transport the damn thing, and uh, so it, it, but but you don't want to invest in something you got to hire out every job too because your machine is way undersized, and the steel tracks you can get rubber cleats put on them. They, they bolt on. That's so that's nothing. So that uh, I've been told by quite a few people, you know, go that route and 
there's two nuts and they both on. Yeah, what's the reach on that 30,000 pounder? Twenty. Uh, give me a minute. I can look it up. Wait, wait just a second. We got it all right here, Mark. Right here, twenty-four feet to the thirty thousand pounder, under, and that's with a zero turn, and there's no tail in flat. Yeah, no tail, and you can put on uh, counterweights if you need need be. Well, everybody I talked to said you, they're not tip top heavy. You you were you heard the guy that runs this one up here, and he was a cat man. Hunter, you heard what he had to say, Sadie. Yeah. yeah, people are. So, so it sounds, it sounds, Dave, as though the, in, um, the, yeah, we definitely do need the larger size. That if, if we're, we're, we're going to buy something, we might as well buy something that really, um, really fits the bill for us. Okay, that, uh, my, that the only other question I've got, who, who do we got on the town that can run it? I can run it. Ryan can run it, and Jason can run it. And I'm not 100% about Grigsy, but I I know Ryan and I and Jason can run it. Yeah. Did we only get prices for Volvos, or did, is that well, they were the cheapest? I well, John David, he's got some prices. Oh. Mark. All right, you got some prices from John Deere, right? The only thing I did was just went out for a wide range. That was the bottom end and top end, somewhere in between. We didn't go out to bid. So I did not waste all my time until the board is like, hey, let's go to the next step. So this is, hey, step two. And step three would be go out to bid and, and nail it down and what would work for us. And I'm, I'm going to say it's going to be in the middle of that price range, I would think. Cat's got a lot more sizes than John Deere does. So I think far as for the town, you're probably going to be looking at a cat or something in the middle of the road, then top end or bottom end, I would think. So I just need you guys, if you guys are interested, we'll go the next step and go out to bid. But I don't want to waste their time and my time with, if we're not interested. It, it sounds as though Volvo's got a good reputation as well. Who's that? Rohan. Um, Mark Volvo. Just like the Marshall's Volvo? Yeah. Yeah, well, well, yes. Probably got to find another salesman. What was that? So, also, we're, we're uh, trying to get some prices from Case, from Randy LaBelle. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, he sent me one, I guess, that he sent you um, a month ago or two months ago or something like that, uh, April 9th, I guess, that you would ask him about one. But this one here was only, uh, uh, where, where was it, 12,300 pounds. And I asked, I sent him an email back asking for something uh, uh, above 30,000 just to get some ideas. I want to be able to compare them and see. And um, I haven't got, uh, Randy hasn't got back to me yet. So I haven't seen anything from him. Um, he did try to call me, but I was in the dentist chair today. So, uh, and I tried to call him back and I, I just got his voicemail. So hopefully we'll have some, some more. Uh, um, we'll check out a few more dealers too. Well, and, and Mark, what, when when you uh, do that, and, and you look at your new pickup, what a municipal discount does. When, when I was pricing those uh, EC sixties, uh, Scott from Volvo was ten thousand dollars cheaper than Case, just because of a Dave, new list. Dave, he was on our loader too. To you read the fine print, so remember that he was on our loader too. To you read the fine print, then he was not, and he won't even look at me today because of we want John Deere because he was trying to put a last one to the town. And it was in our bed specs and we had to have the extended warranty and he did not put it in there and he knew it had to be in there so yeah he won't even look in my way now my well, little show he'll he looks away but well, and, and and it's not our fault you know he's the one it was black and white in our bitch back and he won't even deal with me right now but well 
In, in all fairness, we, in all fairness, we uh, uh, write up the bid and, and give it to everybody as presented. Right. Yep. No, I, I agree. So let me let me ask just just curiosity because there's there's talk about an option of leasing, and does when you run the cost of leasing, um, how does that compare to buying? Because you can lease and then buy it, or again, there are a variety of of, of issues, and I'm. <clears throat> I'm just curious. I have, I, I honestly have no idea what the difference in cost is. It's like if you, if we lease it for a couple of years, um, does, can that go towards a down payment? So we got a little time to do the cash or whatever. They, they have a program that will, you can lease them anyway. Right. They have a program that you can lease them, but you've really got to take and sit down with a finance person. Right. And put it together. Yes, leasing is possible for three, five years. It's going to be more expensive on the long run, as you know. You did this for first. Great. Okay. So you know. Yeah. But if you don't have the money exactly. to come up front, it's a good way to go, but it's going to cost you more money. Yeah. And usually, towns, usually when they do something, they they don't you can at least but you right. can at least for five years if you know a finance yeah. person that it's going to cost you more money year by year well it depends on what they have going <clears throat> right yeah yeah well and 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 again it depends on like we're doing with the paving we're doing the one year loan which <laughs> <laughs> exactly. you know when money is so in, inexpensive right now that, exactly. that that's again that's my my instincts would be that leasing ultimately costs you more, but I mean you'd have to sit down with uh, um, Ellie would have to sit yeah. down with Ron would have to sit down and right. figure that out. And you're gonna see that you're gonna cost yeah. a little bit more money. Right. Hey, Ron. Yeah. Ron. yeah. When we started discussing this, you, you came up with an idea well back to build uh uh rent one. You you said if you rent one for a month you get the fifth week. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you just said about renting it. Now, now what's the possibility of, of the town? I don't think you're going to be using an excavator much in November, December, January, February, and maybe not even to March. Now, what's what's the possibility of Mark and the guys to sit down and say, okay, we gotta we gotta do this, 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 and this, and, and rent them for for uh, two months out of the year, and and send it back where we don't have to pay for it for. 10 months out of the year. That's up to the rest of you. That, that can be done. That can be done, but you know, where are we going to buy one and get this thing over with? And so the boys have had one, you know, I mean, they can do their ditching when they want to, they can do it one week and the next week somebody's off. They can wait, and do something else. You know, it, it's, it's a half a dozen one and a dozen another. Yeah, but I can understand that, but they're not going to do, they're going to any ditching in January, February, March. Well, no, the, I mean, things could happen that you could need one in the winter, right? I mean, yeah. you could have an ice jam. I mean, I don't know. I mean, things could happen. Well, you could, you know, yeah. we have a lot of things that we use ours for in the wintertime. We used ours over there when they had fires in Marshall, their buildings. Oh. Okay, so you know, I mean, yeah. there's a water break. I mean, if the village and the town work together, there's a water break. And, okay. You know, you could use it, you know, kind of rent it out to the village, work out deals like that. I mean, um, there's all sorts of things that could happen. Roland, That's another thing, another thing, just in mind, or Dave, I should say, is so we have a small crew. So one rain event, now we're running around with a grader and trucks or whatever, if it's a bad rainstorm, that machine's sitting because we got to go touch up here, touch up there. Right. You know, we can't, you know, you, we're going to say, we're going to pay for this thing for five weeks. Well, it sat for half a week because we were out doing other things. That's the other downfall with that. So keep that in mind. It, it, it's a discussion the board has to have. Are they going to buy one or aren't they going to buy one? 
Right. You know, there's pros and cons about rent one, and there's pros and cons about owning one. Uh, I don't know which way is the best it's way to go. We got the money and we should buy it. That's my opinion. I was there five years ago. So, well, it, I mean, it's I'm just, you know, in, in listening, we could also lease one for a year and see how it goes. See how much it's used. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, you know, um, and then say, wow, this really works and and then and then buy it. I, I mean, and that's I don't, what and that's what Nick did up here. Okay, because like, that 145 yeah, was leased yeah. last summer, oh, and then he yeah. bought it. Yes, you can do that because you become so invested in it that you have to buy it, sort of thing. Well, when you lease it for so long, you're so invested, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, even you know, then you have it for a full year, and you build up your skill. You say, yeah, this is definitely the size for me. But you can even go, well, this is way overkill. I mean, you know, it would be a year to play with it to really make then make your final decision and to let folks know that's what you, I don't know. I'm just just another option. You know, you know when they bought that one over Marshall, I said, good, I'll catch up on my digit. I'll catch up on my digit. There was so many things that that thing was being used for. It never comes <laughs> <on the digit. laughs> You know, when you've got it, there's yeah. that. You're just gonna find a bunch of sixty things that can be used yeah. for it. Yeah. You know, it's okay. myself. It's a good thing to buy one for the town. Get a trailer. Yeah, it might set two or three months out of the year, but then again, <laughs> when you need it, you got it. You got it right. And you know, if we got the money, fine. We can well, leave it for so. three years. You can lease it for four years. Yeah, I think it even goes to five now. At least. Yes, yeah. that's something you'd have to talk to the salesman. Yeah, I'm just all sort of saying, let's see how many to make sure we sort of looked at all the options and thought about them and you know and explored them. I don't. So, Ron, how's that's the money? We don't have any money right now. We don't have any money. Well, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Well, what the hell are we talking about? <laughs> no, we, we have. Ways to work with the <coughs> which you need to have a hundred thousand dollars for purchase, and we would have to look really good with it. You know, if you want to lease, yeah, yeah, like forty thousand, whatever the cost would be. Here, but I don't know, Chatsby was pulling out her pocket. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> here's my check. Help her fill that up. You might get a shovel, <laughs> that's about all you're getting. Sorry. A new yeah. piece of equipment. Yeah. Not the capital plan. Yeah. Not part of the $160,000 a year that you're yeah. There's another cost is the replacement cost. Yeah. Effect. So you really are talking about 200000 over 15 years of your life. You know? Yeah. So, you know, that's another 10000 at least. 15000 you have to put away every year on top of it. The current ones is just for the we do have the ARPA money, the, the Harvey money, the uh, FEMA reimbursement money that's coming back. We haven't gotten yet. That's why I meant to it. Not that we have no money. We have no money. So, I, I, uh, so there's options there. So I would, I would wouldn't stop this kind of debate. We just, we just need to present it to you. And one, yeah, of, the, one of the things is if you want to purchase, which is a neat, is a solid thing to pursue for option one. Or do you want multiple funding options from short term lease, long term lease, purchase, uh, borrowing it from somebody for a week? Oh, the, you know, just to say, hey, we really want to get comfortable with a 20 and a 30 and a 40 pound, thousand pound. Can we try those from your company and send the crew over to try it out? There's all sorts of things you do before you get to a purchase. Uh, I don't know, 30,000 is a number, maybe 25 is a number after they try the 30. You know, those are the kinds of things that you really want to I would say definite. You know, this is so I think maybe they need to explore a little bit uh, you know, if you're gonna less this to move forward. Yeah. Those guys confirm the size at least. And something like looking for track with the rubber hat on versus a rubber tire. Does the board agree with that? You know, those kind of things make a difference in the type of unit. That's what, that, 
I guess that's where I'm at. I don't, I don't, I hearing that there's 30,000 track with the rubber fitting so it can go on the paved roads is where the highway crew is. But you can go on the paved roads and steal street bats. You don't want to turn this steel though. Right? Okay. What, what do we have? No, but that's what we have to figure out, and that and that's the additional cost. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, once you get off, once you get off the highway, if you get over a bank or something with with rubber, you're pretty much done. Yeah. It always lose the rubbers when you start turning chart. Yeah. Well, that's just for transport. I think is what Mark was saying. When you're at the work site, you'll have steel. But Rolly, you're talking rubber tire, not rubber lag, right? I mean, we were talking about the rubber uh, lag to mine. Yeah, but when Rolly when Rolly say you get off the road with the rubber, you're done. Well, I agree with him, but, but you're talking rubber tire, not rubber lag. Uh, rubber lag, I'm not a big fan. No, we were just talking about adding rubber when they're moving from culvert to culvert, and then you have steel. I've never seen steel. So works as like, but it. So I think that's the decision. I don't know if you're okay. ready for that. All right, so Mark. There, yeah, yep. <laughs> um, what do you think makes the most sense for us to pursue? I would say, in the middle of that bid, somewhere in the middle, I would definitely go steel track with rubber pads, okay? And talking to, you know, and just like Roland was just saying, talking to James Wood, he's like. You can't go nowhere with a rubber track. It's all slimed up, you know. Not that we go, we can't go very far over the bank because we can't get out of the right of way unless we get easement for a culvert or whatever, you know. 90% of our work, or 99% of our work is going to be in our lane. So I want to stay small enough so this thing's going to swing in our lane. Yeah, okay. So I don't want to go too small where we got to hire somebody every second and be have taxpayers say, well, why do we own our own machine when we're hiring it out all the time. So we well, got to let, you know, there's a fine line. It sounds as though the, the 30,000 is the right size. I would say in the 28,000, you know, it's, our big thing is a smashing lead drop. You know, our big thing is ditching and lead drop. And you got to have, you know, a 12, you know, a, a back row can't do it. A 12, you can't smash life rock into a bank when you don't have the weight to do it with and that's you know forced on us by the state obviously and the reach is the other thing and you don't want to be on a teeter-totter like Wolka talking to the him with his cleanup bucket he cannot put lead rock down because he's rocking back and forth he's like a teeter-totter we don't want that you know we want to sit on our own lane and be stable and build load trucks and talking to like James Wood on the 12,000 pound machine. He's like, well, kiss all your sideboards goodbye because you're not big enough to load your tandem. Yeah, yeah, no, that's so, definitely too small. So I went up and I did a little bit of research from some other towns that have them. And that's what I came up with. So I was, that's the very bottom and very top where I want to be. And those numbers from John Deere were just a budget. It's not, nothing's fine tuned. That's just, a budget yeah. number for well, the board to look at, you know. So somewhere in the middle of that, and like I said, you know, Volvo, yes, whatever, Cat, yes. The other thing with Volvo to Cat to John Deere to Case is who has the service and how long it takes to get the parts. Because if you talk to Jerry Audi on the Volvo, loves the machine. No, the parts are hard to get. And I talked to many different people, and that's a big thing for municipality too. Is we can't be down forever. Because you need a machine when you need a machine. Yeah. Hopefully, if it's new, I'm not going to go there with Jerry Audi, but I know the story behind that, Mark. <laughs> and I want to tell you, okay. the whole time that I bought parts from CR Woods, I'd never had a trouble. Well, one of it, uh, a guy came look at our loader that Bobo told that we were buying a Bobo. It was a done deal. And we had a very good talk about it. He has the same problem. He couldn't get hydraulic oil for his machine from Volvo. He had to wait a couple of weeks. I can't wait a couple of weeks for hydraulic oil. I don't know when that was. Talk. I'll tell you, I never had no trouble with Scott or nobody in <clears throat> Penwood. And I always got parts when I needed them. 
But was what? this part thing in the past year, Mark? Because everything yeah. was postponed the past year, so we can't really take anybody's comments about parts being delayed the past year, really, right? Right, but no, this was prior to that because we went, okay. we got our loader before COVID even thought about coming around. Okay. And that's when I talked to a lot of different people, and that's when Scott was saying we were, he sold us a Volvo and had people come looking at our loader and we were cover a done deal. And some of these people who were Volvo had Volvo. A lot of Volvo was up. Very high. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, now I'll say you you put out the same bid to everyone every one of these dealers. Yeah. What do you want? Wrist a twist if you want a thumb, whatever you want, because none of these dealers, none of these dealers, John Deere, Cat, Volvo, or whoever, stayed in business but not getting parts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mark Brian, um, Brian's gotten a bunch of information too, so you, so you guys should get together, but it. Seems seems to me, and if I'm summing this upright, then let's have a motion so we'll know that we're doing. But um, we are definitely. It seems to me we're agreed that the town needs an excavator. Um, you, we got about the size. We know we definitely don't want to invest in anything that's too small. Um, and that uh, I guess the the next step is to move ahead and coming up with what we need and putting it out to get prices from everybody. Um, and and taking it from there, but I think it seems it seems to tell me, tell me if I'm if I'm wrong, but it seems to me as though everybody agrees that buying is the better route to go, not not renting, not even bothering to lease for a year, just to to go ahead and buy it. And there is one thing when it goes out, Mark. Okay. Yeah. The rent the twist. Is on the cleanup bucket. The wrist of twist is on the cleanup bucket. We okay, don't put the wrist of twist on the machine because it only lasts about two and a half years, and you put a new one on. That's, that's so yeah, we'll we'll look into it all we're anyway. Just we're making sure, right? When he goes out well, bid, that, that wrist of twist. But is that's on where the you guys, we all need to look at it before it goes out to make sure we got so, we got everything there. So Mark, um, we need to. Bobby, you, um, Dave, and myself, and Rolly, we can sit down just to get, hammer out what we want on the bid sheet, and then and then drive forward from there. You and you and Mark can take care of that. There just needs two of you. You get four people involved. Jesus, it's like well, you can do it and then ship it out to the. You're the you're the man. Thing. I know how to control you, and I know how to control him. Oh, you and Mark, <laughs> you and Mark, Mark are worried about. <laughs> um, another look, thing, look, though, Susan or Roland and Brian yeah. and Dave, everybody, Cass is. We got the other added expense of the trailer, which I'm gonna. He's gonna love me for. I'm gonna call Ryan out right here, because Ken Harvey just barely bought a new trailer, and he just came in and told us the price, and I can't remember. It was twenty, but if Ron can ask Ryan, I think he's on here. I think he'll remember the price. You hear me? Yeah, that's that's part of the whole thing. In buying trailer and everything. Ken will let us borrow his, won't he? Ryan, what was that price for Ken's trailer? Do you remember? I think it was like twenty five thousand, twenty three thousand. Okay. So that that'd be another added expense. I just don't want to be like, hey, we got an escalator, we can't move it. So there's that's for a new trailer. I think that somewhere right near is where it can be, I believe. Yes. So you said, uh, Mark, the low end was twenty eight thousand pounds. What would you say would be too much? I'm going to say over thirty almost is too much. You know. We want to sit in our own lane. We want to be able to spin in our own lane. We want to be able to put lead rock in. We want to be able to load a truck without smashing the sides of it. So that's for ideal for us. We don't want to be, like I said, I don't want to be anywhere putting lead rock in a ditch where you're balancing back and forth because you won't have enough weight. 
because your machine's too low. You know, that's sensitive for a town highway. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so let's Brian, you and Mark get together, come up with uh with what should should be on it. You can ship it to you know, everybody to say, okay, what have we what have we forgotten? Um, what should be on there? And again, I think part of the whole thing is put the trailer on it because you know. Yeah. It's silly to have it not be able to move it. <laughs> hey, Mark, is, is there a spot that you can post this to and then everybody has access, all the dealers want to bid on it like the state does or something? Ron does. Well, we yeah. just go out to bid with them. We call them and go out to bid with them. That's what we usually do. That's a normal practice. Yeah, it's direct. We usually yeah. do combination direct. Plus. And I would say, as far as, you know, hooking up or uh, figuring out the spat, no, talk to James Wood, talk to Joey Lowell. They're both taxpayers and they both run machines. They'll tell you what no, the town should have and shouldn't have. You know, more so than me. I haven't bought an excavator before. But I think that, you know, with the knowledge of them guys, you run them every day. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you mean you're not going to rent mine? <laughs> All right. Hey, Brian. Yes, sir. Uh, and also, uh, 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 Sue said we've all uh, uh, agreed on buying it, but we're not money men. I mean, compared to leasing, we're not money people, so we don't know. So at the same time, but why don't you get their lease program just so we have something to compare it to? I was well, absolutely. Yeah, I was going to suggest that too. Yeah, all, so all for now. Bids that I got, I think there was a lease right on the very back. Oh, there was. I think there was. Uh, a different way they had different warranties and other stuff like that but I think the one i not, gave you brian's got the uh, the lease pirate yeah it's got a yeah. buyout in the lease on john deere just from the dave high to low side yeah sorry, dave i sent you the um an email with uh the crw's uh, uh quotes on it just so you'd have it as well i didn't get it until uh a later part of the day and i've been busy right through so um but anyways, we'll uh, we'll take the information we we'll we got here, and uh, uh, do like uh, Mark said. If we have, we can, we could talk to uh, some of the uh, constituents that own uh, heavy equipment, and uh, and then figure out from there and go. Well, just we're still very preliminary. I think everybody agrees on that, and the different avenues that could be done. We're just going to research as much as we can to determine which direction we want to go in. So, when can we meet Mark? Uh, whenever you want. Okay, you guys can set that up offline, okay? Okay. Figure out when you can do that. Um, okay, great. That's moving ahead. We do need to set a date for meeting with the Prospect Street neighbors. Hmm. So uh, the town engineer has the sketch, which I haven't gotten yet. It's the it's the revised, updated one since the last time you saw it. So it's due this week. So anytime next week, uh, which would be the twenty fourth on a Monday or through that week, yeah, you know, we'll distribute to the neighbors ahead of time. Because it's important for the neighbor, you know, a little bit. So probably if you if you all have a uh, that's a couple days maybe, and then we can send that to the Right now, on am you said the, the next week you get starting there. next week. Yeah, from, right. from there. Uh, out. Then, of course, the weekend after which is Memorial Day. So yeah, it starts on Friday. Yeah. So yeah, I uh, any night that week. Now that I'm not working, so. And right, so you your regular Monday, Friday. You're back like a real person again. Yeah, I'm almost human. All right, that's good. Which week? Sorry, next uh, week. Next week, the twenty fourth. Yeah. About the 25th, everybody clear there for about five o'clock. I'm good on the 25th. <clears throat> I will not be all the way at my son's my son's lacrosse game, but do I have do I no? If it works uh, right, yeah. Well, why why don't we try the 25th and the 20th or is well, right? Yeah, 12th, I can do the 26th. Do the 26th. Okay. Or see what works for them. Okay. Yeah, give them the dates. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. And then you'll let them yeah. know and then we'll, yeah. we'll put it in my which is definite. So you're going to send us an email on that, Ron? Yeah. Send us one. Yeah. 
Okay. Confirmation. Okay. Um, six was the the special projects list for the with the ARPA money and the and the Ken Harvey money. Um, <laughs> let's see how much we're getting. What like about two hundred and eighty ARPA. So it's about 300 from ARPA for okay. the two phases. So 150 is due in June. If the plan falls together, then another 150 in December. We have 50 from Harvey payoff. Right. That's going to be split up. I'm hoping to do that before June 30th just to close that out. That's, yeah. So we got it someplace. The ARPA is being held in a separate account. So that's not a, it will be held in a separate account. So we don't have to worry about that. Do we know with FEMA how much money we're getting back? Uh, not exactly. I was okay. talking to them today, or Alice was talking to them today. We have a couple projects that might come back, the bigger damage projects than the early projects. And I think she was saying around 200. Was okay. a working number. Some of that's got to go back to pay back our savings right. account. As, how much roughly is our savings account? We don't know how much we I mean, you're going to get 200. And I almost think you have to make a decision on paying back your force account versus your contractor because we have both things going on. We have extra money that was spent to contractors, and then we have our force account money that was helping fix the repairs. Right. And FEMA's giving you back uh, hopefully 92% of all of those expenses. So that's where you get back to the 200. You could agree that any of the force account money is the stuff that you might want to reuse. Right. The extra cost would be paid back to your reserve. Right. Right. Yeah. So right. I would do it in something like that. Yeah. And then when we get the uh, the final accounting of all of this, then you may have more decisions to make, but at least from going ahead. Right. Well, I'm just I'm just thinking yeah. in terms of that whatever amount of money that is to yeah. go into the account for helping to pay for the for equipment. Yeah, so I, yeah, you would take in, if you, if you go to the lease option, you want to try it for a year. You might need 40000 just to keep it there right. for 12 weeks or 12 months. You go to buy it, you're in the 200 to 225 Steel prices go through the roof, who knows what. And you should have money for that one purchase. Right. But we don't have money for all of the list. We have an opportunity to and so you know when people are talking about maybe if you read the newspapers or comments from blct like, every board the select board in vermont should be sitting down and taking the breath and coming up with very thoughtful long-term investments in the community we haven't done that yet we've just said there should be a list susan and i had a little list and we started right. it just to try to jot things down on it um, in the past you've split the harvey money 50 50 with economic development Highway equipment. So you get, I mean, you really do need to sit down some time and think about it, but there's no rush, you know, necessarily. Right. Except, well, one and, and again, thinking of the of the ARPA money and the and the sorts of things to me that logically make sense with this. Like we got some more FEMA money, putting that in towards equipment that helps us deal with the next disaster that comes down the road makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. With the ARPA money and thinking about health. We know the ventilation system up at the garage has been on the list for years. We've been trying to figure out how you come up with the money to pay for it. Before COVID, we were we were going out and figuring out how to do the ventilation system in this building, because when this building was redone, that was on the list to do. But then, of course, as things always run over, so that got cut. So it wasn't it wasn't done. <laughs> As I listened to someone explain to me about the central air conditioning that we had in this building and how wonderful it must be in here in the summertime. And I said, so what building have you been in? <laughs> I was like, oh, let's see, we missed. Um, so so there's there's that. And I just, in thinking in terms of ventilation and sorts of things, I would also say that of, of the town buildings, Hyde Park residents probably spend more time in the library than any of them ever do in this building, and certainly that they do at the town garage. So as they're struggling, well, maybe we figure out what it costs for them to do, because I know that's an issue for them. 
yeah. to, to do the ventilation. So, I, you know, looking at it, we could probably suck up most of that money taking care of these things, but they're all long-term investments in the, in the community. They deal very directly with health. And help get us prepared for anything in the you know in the future of the network. Yeah, and we use excavators for set road. We have some large ones there. We use a lot of large ones for the flood event, and we could have used our own, obviously, for yeah. to yeah. potentially save money. Yeah. Not that those are set road would have been a better example, but the well, FEMA paid ninety-two percent of the bills. The good time to contract <laughs> yeah. yeah, get it done quicker. Right? So anyway. Um, yeah, I think the only way to get it, and like I said, is there a list? Is there some projects? Do you, how do you want to approach that? I'm not exactly sure how the flow would be. You know, we talk about the list, right? And uses. I think part of what just helps is to, is a is to know how much money we're actually going to have, but then b what are the approximate costs on some of these projects? Yeah. Yeah, do so an allocate a percentage to each fund or something. Oh, or funds we chose. Or you do the great leveraging thing where you say, if this is grant eligible, you use it for match. If it's not grant eligible, then they move it either by the number or, or exactly. pays it in or you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't reached out directly to town departments yet. Just they sort of know about it. You know, yeah. Amy knows about it. Mark might know about it. You know, I haven't said it. the select board wants to hear from you. Yeah. Please provide what you just said, which is project name, yeah. description, dollar amount. Exactly. And then help people collect everything so people have a chance right. to have it input. Yeah. And the board makes a decision, of course. So if you want to do that, we can do that and talk about it again in June um, at your meeting. Yeah, there's, there's there's nothing, nothing, they, they there's should definitely burning right. bring in. Yeah, there's nothing yeah. burning right now. In the sense no, no. We don't have the money yet. Number one. Right. right. Uh, but two, all the advice that we've gotten is to take your time. Something will come up. And by asking departments or even the community at large, absolutely. Uh, you might, there's something that you be sad that you missed right. in the end. Right. Or missed opportunities, sort of. Yeah. So I'll do that with well, this, uh, with the June. Uh, 21 deadline, which is your next. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. We need something that we can at least figure out which account to stick money in. So yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. We don't. We don't have to spend it or even commit it. That's what. That's what's nice about this federal money is it's not like here's your money. You have 27 hours to figure out what you want to do with it, which is a nice change. Okay. Uh, town fire department bylaws. Woo! The firefighters. Are... Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that's an excellent suggestion. And I do believe that hybrid meetings are going um are going to become the norm. Um just okay. Yeah. 
Right. Okay, thank you. Okay, the fire department bylaws. The firefighters approved the bylaws on May 6th. Now we just need to formally adopt them and this project will finally be done. So will. Is Dave there? Are you ready, Dave? Are you still here? I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay with them. Okay, cool. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. 127-year project finished. <laughs> um, okay, so who, uh, eight is the uh, allow from the street filling of pools by the town fire department volunteers. Did, yeah. It, wasn't there a big conversation about why they shouldn't fill pools? Liability. Yeah, yes. So it's resurfaced because it's pool swimming time. It's pool time. Okay. It's swimming pool time. And um, firefighters don't object to doing it. So that's one of the things. They, it's not, it, they support doing it. They do get donations for that service. It costs X dollars to run the equipment, but it's not prepaid. That's hourly cost for that use of that equipment. Plus the water meter. meter. <laughs> yep, the water meters. Well, so, uh, <laughs> the issue of do you want to revisit this because the select board is pretty negative against doing it about three years ago now. It wasn't too long ago. <laughs> yeah, right. For the liability uh, reasons, do you want to revisit it with the liability issues to kind of resolve somehow, either through the insurance company or procedures or protocol? But well, there is a, the cost is the hard part because the trucks they're billing two or three hundred dollars an hour. The water costs a hundred dollars. You know what I mean? So it's kind of opposite. well, except in the new world, the water may cost a heck of a lot more. Than well, we've dropped from more. <laughs> okay. Here we go. <laughs> well, okay. No, that's how. It, no, we really do. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. Like, You're not trapped. Yeah, 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 no, I know. Um, so it, it's. I don't know if you if you want to think about. That's one answer. I just want to say no, we don't want to go into this. Another answer. I haven't looked at the liability checklist to agree that even is one. It may just be a flat out do not do this, it's too risky from our insurance company. It's not part of their authorized work. It's only the scope of firefighting. You know, you to find that out. Yeah, I'd like to know that because I'm not a hard no. I'd like yeah. to know. So I think if it, was, if it was in the middle of it, I would do more research. I just exactly. don't want to start getting into well, it. Like, we dealt with this three years ago. I don't want to talk. Yeah. yeah, let me let me pipe in on this because it's I, I've probably been on longer than anybody and it's come up that every three years and it always gets the same answer. Num number one, you have a liability issue. Uh, number two, those are those are town vehicles to be running around and doing uh, uh, a service. One of the biggest thing is we got two people in the area that does that for a living. And it's so. damn expensive. Because I tried to fill my pool and I couldn't do it. Yeah, but it's still, that, that, that yeah. is their business, and, and we we shouldn't be going out and, and taking business away from from uh, entrepreneurs. And well, and, well, and, I, and we're we're running town equipment that at, that if we charge the cost of the equipment, it would cost you a thousand dollars to get your pool filled. See, that's the. the that's the, it's like there is, you, somebody makes a donation to the fire department, but taxpayers have, you know, have subsidized the the use of that vehicle. And I mean, that's that's where we sort of were before. It's like, you're not, um, you know, if they can do that, well, then what can they, what else can somebody with town equipment do, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I could I could use that three loads of gravel if I get Mark on the town truck come dump it for me. I you know I you get you start to get into some um, very gray areas if you start using town equipment for private use. Right. Never mind. Let's find out, Ron. Let's let's find out what the what the liability issue is is anyway. But it's you know. What do, do other towns do it? Morseville does it, don't they? I'm not sure. I think everybody's pretty much. Yeah, 
Hey, Dave. Yes. I'll give you your three loads of gravel for nine hundred thousand. That's what I'm looking for for Center Road. Donation nine hundred thousand. I'll give you three loads of gravel. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it, okay? Okay. Yeah, exactly. But but on this issue, I I agree with Sue that 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 is a a, a, a liability to the town to have. To have people run town equipment when it's not a town job, you know, if it was a fire and then it's out there that they're covered, you know, that they they take the uh, the truck out and I'm not going to say it's going to happen. God forbid it ever did happen, but they back into somebody or they back over somebody. The town is going to be liable for, for that. So, so if I wanted a load of fill from a job, if the town had a job, you were hauling away a bunch of fill. And I, I asked this because I I've been told that I could get fill mm -hmm. if I asked you for a fill permit. So is that that's a liability too, isn't it? Is that different? Yeah. So what, okay. okay. So what we do is we have waste material that we need to dump on property. Got it. So that's different. Okay. Yeah. It's, no, a different no, 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 it's a different liability. No, no, we. Different. Yeah, yeah, that's coming to an end. If you want the not we we can add. Oh yeah, right? <laughs> it's it's an extra. Oh, we'll get there. It's just the three A in the ocean. Yeah, right. But it's a it's a it's partly a problem, like what we're saying, because it's all as a prohibition in the state of Vermont. It's gonna train, have to be all transport of invasives. Uh -huh. what'd you say? It's gonna have to be all state inspected uh -huh. so. Yeah, so there's uh -huh. a, so there's different yeah, so there's yeah. invasives that the state A and R has been nibbling around where they don't want the spread, so we're going to have to take it to a certified disposal site. Oh, that's right. bring it on over. We got a place you can go, but we can certify a site though to get oh. an ANR right. or whatever. Okay, list. Right. yes, yeah, so right. that would be the extra step. You wouldn't be able to bring it sort of anywhere from roadside. This is kind of that's falling that's into that's the that's same that's category that's when they were going out celebrating <laughs> birthdays and stuff like that with the truck, you know, during the COVID up and, 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 and that was supported by the police. He was. It was well, roads. yeah, when, when we they lit up the trucks, and it, yeah, right. It was a public yeah. roads thing, not yeah. private property, but it was still used as public. Yeah. Right. The biggest thing is the weight for those those machines going on to, to go over somebody's leaf field or something. Well, that's why I was noticed it's from mm -hmm. the street filling of the pool. Yeah, I noticed that was yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 from the street. That was you have to go over the bank. We were anticipating that yeah. we wouldn't be able to do somebody's back. Exactly. But if somebody's within the reach of the hoses, that doesn't involve trucks on that property. That's and, but then we I don't I'm not clear. Dave's got a good point on the commerce piece, competition. Oh yeah. That that might be the first thing to look at because even if you can clear up all the liability and reduce your risk, would it still be seen as an unfair practice by the public entity competing directly with commerce? Which it sounds like it is between your experience and you know the right. expense of going to the conference. Sure, right? because well, that may be state, a stopper on its own practically. Right, state corrections I has, has the issue of particularly when they're making furniture, okay, and you can't because you're not paying people, so you're competing. That's a constant sort of thing with the, signs you, we get with the state. Corrections. Yeah, so I know those are just a little bit cheaper than that rock bottom, so there's got to be some. So again, because if if we were actually charging the hourly rate for the use of the trucks, including going to Morrisville to fill it up, you know, you you then you wouldn't be making a hundred dollar donation to the to the fire department. So I think I'm just thinking out loud, but maybe that's the first question: is it if you you absolutely are prevented from undercutting a commercial entity that operates in your area? By some federal no. law. I, I don't I don't I don't I don't think there's any law. Just but let's just check out the liability anyway. Not and, the and, yeah. yeah. It, but but to give them all due and we got a new fire chief and we got let's you know let's sort of see what it is. What I'd be interested from the fire department is if they charge the hourly rate that it costs to run a vehicle, what would they need to oh, charge people? Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. What would it cost to fill a pool? Okay, Brad can give us that. Yeah. He's got many of them. Yeah. Brad, are you still alive? <laughs> he was. 
Brad's going, I'm getting out of here. Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> um, let's see. So, uh, did you hear the uh, request from Susan? Yeah, the audio problem. We'll oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, all right. Talk to her tomorrow. Okay, nine. Authorizing a person to sign the Preservation Trust of Vermont grant documents. So now, did Dave, did Dave end up with a conversation with, okay. He said he was more confused, though. <laughs> just go on. Dave's here. Yeah. yeah. I talked to her, and, and I agree with Chastity. She is one nice lady. Yeah. Very helpful and stuff, but I was more confused when I hung up and I was when she called. So I'm sorry. But but what what I did, what I think I did out of it was that was the grant they went after was just for the windows. That has nothing to do with anything else. Exactly. You know, it, it, it's not a blanket grant. It's just for the windows. So if they wanted to, I said no. Uh, to me, preservation is preserving something. Now, if they wanted to replace that that stamp pin ceiling with a drop ceiling, could they do it? And she says, maybe yes, maybe no. She said, but all I'm dealing with is the windows. So maybe yes, maybe no. That's a no. Yeah, it's a so. It, it, it's just one of those just one of those programs that run by free money that uh i don't know like i said i i'm i'm still confused about it she didn't give you a straight answer yes they could put the drop ceiling in, or no they couldn't put the drop ceiling in the ceiling it's definitely no they can't put the drop ceiling Wait, well, I, she said when we talked on the phone, and we could they could do what they wanted. Well, to yeah, yeah, see, I think mean, that's a good want. point. That's yeah, you put it in or not. I think that's why you can't say you, that gets yeah. interpreted as yes, you can do anything you want. Where it's like, well, yeah. there are some parameters. Want to follow this up with a written letter type stuff with yeah. three questions. And, and I think she, I think she said the reason she didn't know because she didn't know. You know that that, that wasn't her her side of it. <laughs> Right. So, so I, I agree with Ron. E either send a letter or, or maybe ask her if she could come down some night and sit in front of the board where everybody can ask the questions and get it cleared up. Yeah, that would be the best. Make yourself a Because you can't make she a decision on what you don't know. Or... Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Are, are they, uh, Chastity, because you were, are they? Ticking on a time here. We need well, to get some papers signed. I'm thinking they yeah. got a, they're on a time frame. Here. I was just actually looking at my email. I can't. Oh, there we go. Because Ron, she emailed, right? And do they they do need to get it signed? I don't remember a date, but it was soon or something. Yeah. Some mm -hmm. kind of encouraged mm -hmm. language of maybe. It's, I wouldn't be surprised if they just uh, get the contract signed by the end of June, so they don't go to the. Oh so, yes. Okay, well, maybe maybe they could set up a virtual meeting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. We have learned that those are much easier to schedule and to participate in. So Cassidy can reach out for some dates and sure and see if the board members can do it. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. And is the proposed amendment to the village water easement at two twelve so the fire station? The fire station. Okay. What or is oh. Oh. My day. <laughs> uh, so last December, I think it was, the select board approved an easement 
benefiting the village by part for their water uh, line for the fire station. It was a vault just outside of the south side of the building with a new line going in. And the board signed it. They didn't record it and had a design change. And the design change is that there's an overflow or pressure relief, relief valve that needs to be installed, which will send water out of that vault and then onto either onto the lawn or towards the back bank. Uh, and when you get to the back bank, you're on somebody else's property. So okay. typically when you send new water to somebody that isn't expecting it in a new location, that usually get permission from them too. So I don't know if that water is totally contained on our property or sit there, or if it's meant to disperse and keep going on to the neighbors property, which we had wetlands out there two years ago, maybe three years ago, for some fill that was going to be put on the edges. I think it was a class three wetland, so it's not a regulated wetland. But she did say it's it's wetland back there. That probably doesn't matter with a little more water, but it's not regulated. And we, we might get in trouble that way too, because it's state water when it's regulated. It's not state waters when it's a class three for this type of thing. So I don't know where that puts us. Um, I, I I don't know how I just practically feel about having water discharge across the back lot of the fire station. Um, the water that's in there, it, it, what would cause it to um, for the valve to discharge it? I think thing? it's a preventive measure so that the pipe doesn't have a problem. In the, and it can't be just recirculated back into the system. I didn't get that far. Yeah. That's that's something with Dufresne would probably if you want if you want to take the lead, just give them a call. I can hook you up with your engineers. You can explain it better as to what the new need is and how it, how it will impact the downstream owner. Yeah. So if I, if yeah. I own the problem, if you own the downstream, right, you have the problem yeah. with the downstream acceptor of yeah. water. <laughs> yeah, but this would be just a blow off, right? It wouldn't be constantly. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, no, but I would think it's just just a blow off, like you say. Yeah. In so, case something is yeah, pressure yeah. built up. Or yeah. I don't know. I don't understand it either, but. So, okay, that's property when it goes out to constantly discharge. Well, it's on the fire department. It's on the fire department. Right? Oh, it is the house up there. That's yeah, cool. there's, a bunch of, there's a shallow area. I know where. Okay. I think it'd be all right. To have that. I don't think it. I don't know what it's for. The valve, you mean? So, let me see if I can find. <laughs> I want the engineer to tell me. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, engineer. I don't know what the hell. Recently, I have a little more information. This is uh, water comes down over that hill. So much pressure. Yes, it's too warm. But then again, we have warm water going the opposite way. Somebody's doing that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, turn it and jump. An engineer was bored. Oh, really? <laughs> You're right, right here. You know, so so the concern now was the so the four inch pressure relief uh, surge anticipation bill tells you don't give me no pets. Exactly. But it goes into the box. <laughs> no, it, no, it discharges out. I see. Discharges out. Four inches, it can be quite a bit of water. You see? <laughs> I don't know what it's for. I don't here, we'll take a look at this. What? What? That's it. Right there, he's talking. There's a release valve, and that's in that little box that's going to be off. I'm gonna, um, oh, I'm sorry. It's big enough. <laughs> like that. It's making this. Oh, what? Oh, it's a big thing. I like all the things. That's what it is. And it will never blow off unless something happens. Unless there was something in there. Yeah. The to go out through the what's this right here? This is a tank and it's all stored. In. All, all this apparatus is in this tank. Let me bring it down here so you can see the tank too. And then there's a side view here. 
<laughs> so you'd have to, it, basically you'd have to have enough pressure that's built up that they you need an escape hatch. That's what it I is. It is. I don't yeah. think it's going to be an issue. I don't think it's going to be an no, issue. No, I can't. What, what do you think? Hey, what would hey, hey, hey roll it. Did I heard? Yeah, yeah. You want to see it? Roll it. No. <laughs> Roll it. Trust you. <laughs> Something just uh, that blow off. W weren't they having trouble when they were having fire practices over there? If they shut their, if they Amber. shut the the, the, the holes Amber. off too quick, it would blow that valve. Right. But maybe that's what it's for, Dave. Because if you shut that valve down, the it it hammered so hard and jumped the holes right up the. That's yeah, right. We're, we're, into it. Hammer. Rather than blowing the blowing the line, it releases the valve. Must yeah. be. Must be. That's what it is. That makes sense. So it's nothing that will rent water for any length of time. No. So that's mostly by air. Yes. No. Yes. So David Rude's town attorney has been working with Stackpole and French, coming up with this revised easement, and David's said that the discharge and is proposed to be located on the property to the south of the fire station, but it seems the village wants some flexibility if its plans change, but about, which might be, be detrimental to the town's property. It's ultimately up to select board how much leeway it must provide approving the proposed easement so long as there is no discharge of the draining onto the town's property. Wouldn't it be a bad limit to put on the conveyance? easement so basically the daylighting would be on somebody else's property who would they have to get another easement for mm -hmm. i think that's so it doesn't discharge behind the fire station creating a problem at the fire station building or hmm. but so how, it's much like a much, how much do they own there of that swampy area of that uh, it's a rectangle there's line. a fence there there's a fence that goes down through it's a red jones's old place i remember when i was mowing it so, you know, they went up and then they dropped off back here. Yeah. And like Actually, you said, it's, it's, it's something with the Ukraine group, maybe, to understand it better. But it's, it's hard for me to picture exactly what, what the risk is, if any. I don't know what the risk would be. Either. So, like, where do you put the pipe? Where is it going to discharge? You don't want to discharge it next to a corner foundation. You don't right. want to discharge it right. where there's going to be other problems on the town property. And yeah. Your downstream neighbor probably doesn't. Discharging some kids walk. What he's saying though, when it hammers like that and it releases and shoots it out, and it can be quite a discharge uh, for a moment here. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. That's going to be a real, just like turning on a hose. But I think Dave's right with that uh, hammer lock. They used to have, we shut that down too quick. Oh my God. Pressure backs up and you get okay. So that probably is what it well, is, but I don't know. Yeah. So let's 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 figure out how we figure out exactly what this is. Um, who's the Dave? Are you the, no. the fire? No. Are you the no. fire department? Yeah. Yeah. On? Okay. I was waiting for that. Okay. <laughs> I'll find out. What yeah, yeah. Find out what Dave is the engineer, and and just go check it out and see. You know, it's great. <laughs> Oh, that's all right. Me too, because then I might learn something. I really want to figure out what it is myself. Yeah. Oh, okay. I wouldn't mind going just so I could learn. Oh, well, you can go. Well, no, you need to go too. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See how that works? Right. Yeah. Yeah, He's work. passing the bus already. Yeah. <laughs> what you do is get all fresh. Right. <laughs> oh, true. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. True. You want to do great with the German fire engineer. Yeah. Yeah. You have to talk to you. And he can probably explain it pretty easily. Okay. Oh, we're doing good at pushing stuff off. <laughs> okay, town blister. Okay, see, we got Julia's resignation letter today. Oh, I did it years ago. Well, just oh. temporarily until we get somebody. Yeah. Okay, the town. All right, Ron, what's happening? We need to appoint. I think we got to move to a point, right? So, point just no, I, I declined. So, <laughs> so we had we had the advertisement out. We've done some outreach and uh, yeah, yeah. 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 stuff yeah. for uh, basically the second mm -hmm. select board exercising its uh, statutory power to appoint a town assessor. I, I talked to Ed Claude Belter, who's the lead assessor for Nemrick. 
uh, who we've signed a contract for starting July 1. So the gap is now to June 30. So there, you've already done what happened in July 1. Right. Now you have to. Uh, I think Chastity could get us through a couple months. You <laughs> said she had prior experience. Yeah. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> so, I'm Thank you, Jeff. You know, I'm would be as Claude Bell to do the motion so that we can have them or him do the signing of the grant list and everything right. before the listeners would normally do. Right. That has to be done in the next couple of weeks. Okay. All right. Just need a motion to appoint him. So move. So move. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? I thought, that was yes. I thought I thought Chastity. I didn't see. I didn't no. see no, that, <laughs> believe it or not, what I do here is about a five second lag time, time to get to you guys. So I oh. I raised my hand on yes, but it showed it on no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You come up with a good one, anyway. <laughs> Watch. I just broke. I just waved. You just wait. There you go. Okay. Um, the RFP response to the VTRAN easement appraisal services. Right. All right. Well, we were lucky enough to get one response to another RFP. People are so busy with everything and low number of people doing it. So yeah. everything's getting pushed, prices are going up. We have one response from O'Brien and Kappenberger, and that's to uh, complete five parcel appraisals for the sinkhole project. On West Main and Dawson Street extension, uh, total contract price will range from twelve to sixteen thousand. Twelve to sixteen thousand for five. Yeah. That's the only response. That was the second part. Of the first right. one we gave you. Makes you want to be a freezer. No. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, we got it. Did I just hear it? Yeah. Take that one back. <laughs> so this is what's going to the project now. There's been a series of delays. So the town right away got to be clear to the to VTrans COVID delays and reviewing projects, including reimbursement sometimes. And now we're facing a delay because the appraisers are not uh, nice. being very competitive. But right. they can do the work now. between right. July and August. It's not even very uh, there are only options. If you don't take it, like the only option is to wait for the economy to turn around or something until they have less. <laughs> more <laughs> <power to them. laughs> I don't know if the options Ten are. Years. Uh, this is the eighty percent uh, state and federal funded project, so it's mm -hmm. okay. so they do have a little bit of a leeway there. With twenty percent town taxpayers. Yeah. So, well, I think we ought to move ahead. Yeah. Yeah. We got to move ahead. Yeah. So. Uh, Nina, well, we need a motion. Yep. I didn't mean to wake you. Uh, Dave? He's the one asleep. Oh, there he is. Good morning. Good morning. We're, Say we're it again. About how you feel about uh, uh, the appraisal. Have it done? Yeah. Okay. Oh, he's voted yes. Yeah, he's voted yes. Okay. Yeah, that was the hand yeah. yeah. that, that, that was the yes. That, that we did. Okay, so uh, it's all those in. Favor of the second meeting. Yeah. Aye. Say aye. 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 <laughs> we got it. Dave. Dave's there. Okay. He's leaving. Um, the next is to uh, engage Stritzel, Page, and Fletcher to, uh, to support the collector of delinquent taxes. And um, we sort of all pretty much agreed this is what we we're. How we were gonna you had two to choose from and said Kim, you make the decision, she's recommending David yeah. Rue again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's it. right. Excellent. Better uh, to do the same guy anyway. I'm probably it's probably yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we <laughs> did have three or four attorneys at once. We were sort of consolidating on some of the Yeah, they just uh we have a firm views as a pair. Right for personnel stuff. Right, I was going. To, I know that's all I could come up with too. I was going. Wait, did, so we need didn't that used to be a position? Don't we have a collector tax delinquent taxes like as an elected position? Yeah, well, Kim does. No, you did. Kim does, Martin, but Martin. you end up needing lawyers. Got it. Okay. Martin Locke was elected. That's who I'm thinking of. Yeah, we went to 
appointed. Then we went to appointed. Okay. And took it as part of the yeah. office. Yeah. Got it. Right. So she does it, but then the lawyer was. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Ooh, she is kind of excellent. <laughs> and it, one of the other things she's really good at working with folks is getting them to have it be part of their mortgage payment. So our percentage delinquent tax is really low compared to everybody else around us. And she is very good at when people are out of plan with them and keeping them on, on the plan. She is she's great at it. Making it manageable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she's, she's very good. And then when there's an issue, as we get down to, oh, here's Mr. Bartlett still playing hard to get. Not to Do you have a motion by somebody on that. Okay, let's see. So, uh, right, need a motion to engage. Yeah. Okay, it's moved and seconded. Uh, all the people signified by saying aye. Aye. Oh, there's a hand. That's all. <laughs> Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Oh, so now here's what when you get to the the personnel policy. Cassidy <laughs> yeah. is taking care. Of it. Yes. Yeah. Who would you write? Yes. <laughs> oh, I thought. We were going to oh, no. I already yeah. 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 just wanted to make sure that the board, the board individually, is fine. Yeah. So if we make it a personnel policy, like to just an example to uh, make it available to have uh, access to the gym or something, does that take it out of the realm of the uh, of the contract? To be duplicated, probably. They can have it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can have like one or the other. Yeah. You have it both as well. Okay. I did. This is not a conflict of interest, right? No, no. Okay. From the policy perspective, you would abstain from direct highway benefit discussions, like the union contracts. But yeah, I think you could even talk about the global, you know, the cost of living increase. Okay, because I mean that's yeah, right. yeah. Right. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Right. So just, that's more of a note to. Just keep okay. on the agenda for everybody to speed it up the chain to the, cool. the drafters. If you, okay. if you have a question or topic to look into. Okay. Um, review and approve the town orders. So I think those are here. Are. Or they not? No, she sent us an email, didn't she? Was, was that uh, mm -hmm. okay. check real quick to see if that's posted? Good evening. There are no tolerant and specific to tonight's meeting. Okay. My battery's dead. So we got to adjourn. Right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good here. Okay. Now I see 517 check more in. Paper don't go bad. Hmm? Paper don't go bad. That's true. Yeah. So do you want to take no. okay. a look at those? I don't yeah. Know. Yeah, she, but she just barely sent it. I don't know. Yeah, let's see the warrant itself. I don't have the backup for the invoice. Yep. Dave, we can hear the lawnmower really loud. <laughs> Well, it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> we went by. Yeah. Anyway. Um, sit. Having just gotten them, is anybody? Okay. Yeah. And my battery, so I'm gonna have to abstain because I didn't get to look at them. Unless you want to share. No, we, 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 we can. I, 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 I don't have an extra. Go on the town website or I can put them out. Oh, yeah. I could go on the town connect. Oh. I could bring them. 
Well, oh my it's so much of Yeah. Um, when my question was trying to do that's true. Right? Um, do we want to, as, as we go into the, or at least through June, do two meetings in June so that we do the, because we really, as you guys take on the personnel policy, we've gotten a bunch of the stuff out of the way. We could, um, if we're looking at, at asking folks for input on suggestions about the money and that comes in at our next meeting, that's sort of right at the end of the month. Um, should we maybe get together earlier to, um, well, to talk about money, it could also, we could by then have, have information about the, uh, about the excavator, yeah, we could. which, which would be, um, it's certainly the, the advantage of doing two meetings is, is we do a couple hours. And, than and I think, I think we're probably all a lot more productive for two hours as opposed to three and a half hours. Um, and maybe if we just do that in June and maybe in July and August, we, we just go back to one. But if we, we did that. We have excavators to have in a few weeks, right? Do you have an extra yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 and he's got a lot of it, so that if we week. met June 7th. They're going to meet with the mark still, but still to get So that that would leave us in June doing the 7th and the 21st. June 7th? Yeah. Okay. Um, just do our regular six o'clock. What leads me to, so do we want to do these warrants now? Again, I can always just do a quick look through them. There isn't anything. It's all the regular stuff. Okay. <laughs> Like there, I'm not. I'm not seeing anything that's anything leaping out. Going out. like, oh no. Which, if if there is anything, yeah. she usually calls it out anyway. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. She says it holds. Oh, it's just all the regular stuff. I can actually talk about summit engineering. There's some bigger bills in there if you want to. Okay. So summit engineering, uh, they tend to bill in quarters. So we end up getting like quarterly bills in one. So you can see prospect streets on there. They've been doing the redesign of that road with the watershed consulting to come up with that site plan we're talking about. Center road culverts, they help with some of the design on sizing. And the kitchen uh, for Ferry Street. So on Ferry Street, we had them go out, look at a drainage problem, and found a catch basin. We didn't know exactly where they lined it and things like that. So we're trying to figure out how to solve a um, through and look for the problem numbers. on Ferry Street near Route 100. Yeah. Of course, some of the water is in Route 100. That's a problem too because their system's failing. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of like, it would be really great if we could work with Beatrix on those kind of things. They have two problem spots really close yeah. together, and right. we, just, we don't tend to do that. We kind of just say we can do something out of it quicker. Uh, so we had an existing site plan done, which included trying to get contours to keep our water and our road and deal with it. Which looks like it'll include some kind of uh, maybe a small catch basin installed on the south side of Ferry Street. In a, in a shallow area rather than rebuild the road. <laughs> you have two options with drainage. Either you can re, we can do the elevation of the ground, right? To solve the drainage problem. Or you can take the low spot, put a catch basin in there and send it somewhere else. So that's the Ferry Street solution. Uh, Mark's been working with uh, Doug Weber on that. We're better off with a catch basin. 
Well, I'm staying out of the state right away is the only way you're going to get something done, too. So, right. along with this brand new pavement, no, you know, two or three years old now, water is not going to be nice to it sitting there. So, anyway, so those are things that kind of go on, like I said, go the project planning. We got watershed consulting. I don't know if there was in here, but we had a. I didn't see them. No, probably not yet. But they, they have. Multiple projects going on, some of the big grant funded, some of the FEMA funded. So, we're trying to get some projects ready for construction, which the Biden administration frees up some more money. We'll have some projects that are ready to go off. Yeah, they're we call it 30 percent design, is a kind of a threshold. Once you get to a 30 percent design, you can have a project that's ready to uh, final design and construct. But you can't go from scoping to final design construct. You have to get to that thirty percent middle part. Gotcha. So, um, anyway, we're, and that's helpful for grants too. So, once we get those things done, grants get really easy because some of the questions that we know are going to be in the grant application are part of the thirty percent design. Excuse me, contours, options you looked at. Oh. Okay, so you're doing a quick Rolly got any questions. Dave, do you have them? No, all set. Thank you. So I'll make a motion to approve them. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All in favor of uh, approving the warrants signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. You know, Google Chess, he has the document to sign. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. What do we have to sign? <laughs> I'm like, wow, and Dave, Dave can't do it over Well, Dave can. We'll just hold it up to the screen. Oh, okay. We'll okay. Hold it up to the screen. Oh, okay. Okay. Sign. This is all in the bottom of the money. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had already signed it. Oh, I got everybody. Way okay. smaller, Dave. Right. Right. Oh, he's got all, all the already marks yeah. for it. Okay. Leave a signature with the cross. Yes, right. <laughs> Indelible marker you use. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go. Oh, let's see. ATV. Which I'm not working on about ATVs. <laughs> I'm surprised it hasn't been brought up. Yeah, well, somebody, somebody said you, get, you got all of them, right? Yes. I, Okay. All right. Who are we going to talk to about the 911 signs? Me. Oh, because some of them got done on Central Road. Do they not do private roads? Do I have to pay for mine because I'm they're private? On, they're on Central Road. They're working. Yeah, takes... but I'm at the beginning and they're done, but they didn't do my little road. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Chief Carey. Are you on this letter? I know. You'd think I, they'd take good care of me. Chief Carrier. Oh, okay. For me. He's in charge yeah. of that program. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what what George Cook used to do it. Yeah. But now it's right. Now it's right. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious. I noticed that they were. I have time to numbers. Gotcha. Brett installs them. Gotcha. Right. Okay. And then we're going to go to landowner responsibility shortly. Right. Probably it's all done. Hopefully, two more years will be done. Okay. Um, well, then we can. So the. June meetings again. It sort of sounds like we're just going to keep doing hybrids, but but we got the the interesting conversation with the um, earlier was so our mask policy is as we try to follow the state going. So what's that policy? <laughs> Not I don't even know. Yet. They've got two or three. I I know. Well, there's, a, there's a gap of basically six weeks or four weeks. I think the governor's press conference on. Friday. 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 Indicated he might push that July 4 a little bit up to maybe the 15th of June, which right. is the new end of current order. Right. right. We're, he'll announce that tomorrow, I bet. Yeah. So if he, yeah. if he goes to the recommended level, which is what he planned to do July 4, then I think we just have a, have a meeting and have a sign out that's math at your own pleasure kind of sign. Right. Between now and then, we have the unvaccinated people, which right. is what Brian and I were talking about. Having a revised sign that says uh, unvaccinated, no entry. Okay. And for the next four weeks slash six weeks, to okay. just to get us through the end of it. 
unvaccinated people would have virtual options. Exactly. And virtual, okay. So we would that we would keep it hybrid. So and they can come in without a mask and we don't ask questions, we just assume that they're doing the right thing. Yeah, exactly. you're right. That's right. Oh, so you can. Yeah. Well, in, in, yeah. in yeah. proof right. and yeah. 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 Okay. Um well, and again, I think you know the virtual options are going to remain there. It's just it's so easy for a lot of people that it's, which I think is terrific. Yeah. We've we've certainly seen in the past year more people joining. Yeah, you know, and and it's and it's easy to because you know sometimes when you come and then if you feel like you want to leave but, but you, you don't can't. feel good leaving exactly you, feel, you know it's like whereupon when you're tuned in you're just like yeah okay I'm gone yeah. yep. Everybody have a nice evening. I'm going out to plant my garden. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, okay, we'll keep plugging along that way. And certainly far from last but not least is the continued saga of Mr. Barton. And my GMB. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. So, uh, Michael Bartlett, we got, had a question last meeting about whether the town should pay the water bills. Yeah. Roger Odette wanted it paid by the town as the property owner. Yeah. Right. Town attorney said, no, we do not pay. That's his responsibility right. as the tenant. And we have no responsibilities to basically a squatter who's not there legally. He's not paying the rent. Would it say the president? What? Would it say the president? No. We don't. This is the only situation we got mm -hmm. going on. Yeah. Um, well, but right. If we did start paying the bills, then well, we'll I mean, that would be the end reason to not do it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, exactly. Right. Thank right. you for talking about some prior decisions. Yeah. 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 So, we'll set this up. Uh, does that mean Roger's going to shut it off? Almost there. And then the yeah. court documents, which the board also said to pursue. Yeah. Our, I'm working with town attorney uh, Dave Donnie and maybe called to serve papers like this week. Yeah. Which are basically uh, notice of termination type of stuff. Under the state law, it's got 90 days to make good on prior debts, which is at the end of August at this point. Uh, if no action happens at the end of 90 days and the court the emergency order is over, we go to Superior Court and get the order to vacate, you know, enforce, basically. So that's, that would be the end of this is a linear move at this point. Right. Yeah. Whatever he does, he can make his choices on whether he stays or goes. Okay. So that's it. I have been keeping in touch with Roger on that because I know he's okay. interested. So. Right. We talked today right. and we talked last week, so he knows. And the town attorney's actually been nice enough to give him some pointers. Make sure before you do a water shutoff notice, you know, the tech title 24, blah, blah, blah. Oh, good. Yeah. So, yeah, that's sort of a freebie to our municipal entity up there. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. But it was just a sentence. So, right. Yeah. Green Mountain Byway. Uh, right. I've been filling in with other people over the last. Seems like a year and a half anyway. And Al Spitzer, after I asked if anybody was interested in starting to do attend the monthly meetings, he said he'd be glad to go and start going to these. So this will be an appointment of Al Spitzer to the uh, as the town representative Fremont Byway Committee, which is a group of towns. There's 10 towns, I think, involved. Nine towns. And the Lamoille Economic Development Corporation is the fiscal agent, so there's no town monies that are mixed and in the sense of writing checks and things the woman economic development does that this group uh basically is managing website at this point and making tweaks to it and trying to get the word out so that's a quick motion for now and that's just through march 22. right which we then no we see more volunteers right right to town meeting yeah yeah so moved Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? He raised his hand. He raised his hand. We didn't mention it. Uh, 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 okay. You got anything else? For... Is anything going on with the, the safety committee? all that at that meeting yeah i didn't, well, I didn't know 
the regional planning office. Are you gonna? Well, get it. The regional, the regional planning office was asked on uh, the if they could help look at the regional. Right. We'll get some on their own, doing their own thing. What? Well, let me let me know. Well, let me know. say that's the last second. Oh, yeah. Okay. The regional okay. said the legislature is almost out of session. They might be tweaking our authority. Absolutely. Uh, right. So that's. And I can hear it. Right. So we don't know if that's gonna happen or not. Right. So we're trying to go to stand still. So here. well, but but then the group um decided, so we talked with Wolfett and Wolfett and Johnson and said, you know, we sort of here's here's the report, what do we do next? And had a <coughs> long conversation with Wolfett and uh, Nat Kinney's picking up the and they had a couple of people in Johnson that were interested in it. Um there are a couple of people in Walcott that are interested in it. Um, those of us that have been running around this track for a number of years, every time new people come in, what they're interested in finding is how you have more service for less money. Uh, no one has ever found a successful answer yet, but we're <laughs> running around the track to see what happens. Um, so so uh, folks agreed and we are the end of this month going to get together to sort of figure out so where here are the reports where do we want to go so we'll so i so by june 7th we'll have a see where people want to you know want to go okay and there i mean it's not as though there are a lot of choices right <laughs> you know so it's just like okay um yeah. again so we'll just sort of yeah. See what happens. Somebody coming up with the magical, <clears throat> here's how you spend less money and double your services. Yeah, we'll be there. Man, I'm, I'm all in. in. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't care what we're buying. It's <laughs> like, okay, I'm in. We're ready to go. <clears throat> Except it sounds like Amy Duncan and stuff. That may not be a good business to get into. Right. So I guess we're good. We'll do the seventh and hopefully have some, uh, yes, become much more educated about excavators mm -hmm. and uh catch us up on this maybe begin doing some some um, personnel policy work yeah see where everything is okay that sounds good ready to adjourn thanks cool. thanks doing uh, so and hopefully hopefully on the uh on the seventh day will come join us again we start everybody getting in the yeah, what, what people are comfortable with is this is it's this is a, nice it works. yes it is yeah yeah that's, that's right we'll come up with the, with the sort of different approach yeah. oh, we so missed you yeah. dave it's better in person it's, be, it's better in person to have you around he's like what <laughs> <laughs> I, I said it was better to have you in person than on the screen. You're, you're easier to pick on. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made a few words. Oh, okay, motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Everybody opposed. Okay. Wait a minute. <laughs> I, I do like.